All right, welcome to this edition of the Whole Roofing and Remodeling Podcast. Uh, tonight we are in Austin, Texas area with uh, Eric O of um, three things: D and M Roofing, mm-hmm. um, Roofers in Recovery, mm-hmm. and his podcast, Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. Mm-hmm. So um, we're mainly going to talk about um, just Roofers in Recovery. It's a it's that's a nonprofit that he's a huge part of. And are you a founding father, I guess, technically? I am a co-founder of Roofers and Recovery. Okay. Yes. So uh, as a company, we've uh, supported them the last couple of years. Um, so I'm going to let him talk a little bit about Roofers and Recovery. Well, first, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Tell us about your family and uh, kind of all that stuff. And then we'll talk about Roofers and Recovery. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me here. Um, Eric Obremt. Uh, Eric O, as most people call me because they can't pronounce my last name, uh, which is totally fine. Uh, own DNM Roofing out of Omaha and Houston area. Um, oh, whatever you did there sounds way better. Air conditioning must have turned off. Um, been in roofing since I was 10 years old. Uh, this is just, this is what I know. This is what I do. Um, started working for my grandfather. Like officially I was probably 15. I was running a kettle on a low slope crew, um, and started installing and, and running a crew and then started selling when I was 16. Uh, he gave me a pad of paper and it was like, go sell this. I'm like, what does that mean? And he said, figure it out. You've been watching me long enough. And I said, all right, cool. So I did it. And I just fell in love with, um, I don't know if I fell in love with roofing per se, but I fell in love with like uh, getting the opportunity to make new relationships with people like on a daily basis, right? I guess every day was a little bit different. Every day was new. It wasn't clock in, clock out, you know, do the same shit every day. And I really enjoyed that. I didn't know where it would take me. I had no idea. Um, But the one thing that I knew was that I did not want to work as hard as my grandfather did. I wanted to figure out a way to work smarter. Um, but there was no school for that because they don't teach you that shit in college, right? right? They teach you in college how to be an employee. Yep. They do not teach you how to be a business owner, an entrepreneur at all, right? Business school, business, any of those, you know, classes that you take is literally to teach you to be a good employee and to check in and check out. And, um, I knew that that wasn't, that wasn't me. And so, I kind of started running the day-to-day operations and then grandpa passed away eight, nine years ago and I took over the rest of the company and I invested all the money that I had literally into the business and influxed it and it wasn't that much money (laughs) that I'd saved up maybe like 50 grand and um, put everything that I had into it and bought a property and started buying people, you know, to have employees and uh, and we kind of took off from there and, you know, now we're here and now we have roofers in recovery. Um, so if you want me to tell the story about that, a yeah, little bit, how it was founded. Absolutely. So about, so my story is I'm, uh, so obviously I'm sober, right? Roofers in recovery. Um, I got sober about 13, I think it'll be 13 years in January. I think that's right. And I know it's January. I just can't remember if it's 13. After you hit 10, you kind of fucking lose track. Um, but I met, um, uh, my friend, Paul Reed, at a conference about four, four or five years ago. And we got introduced and I actually just had a business question to ask him. I didn't know him. Um, I was thinking about opening up another location and I wanted to ask him a question. And I sat down with him at the APA booth and we were sitting there and we just started, you know, bullshitting for a few minutes. And literally within 10 minutes of us talking, we figured out that we were both sober. We're like, well, that's cool. And then all the business went away and we just talked about recovery for a while, right? And we then figured out that both of us had been sober for a while. We used to be very plugged into our recovery and AA community and we had kind of fallen off of that, right? We had gotten comfortable, we had gotten complacent and we were both like, man, we should be doing more. Like we should be helping people, we should be doing something. And, um, some time went by and then one day I was literally, I I remember the day, I don't know why, but I remember the day and Paul called me and he was like, Hey man, we need to, we need to do something. And I was like, okay. I'm like, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know. He's like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just give back and you know, if we could send one person a year to treatment and I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool. How do we do that? And he's like, I don't know, like throw 10 grand each into a pot and somebody calls, we'll fucking send them to rehab. I'm like, all right, cool. Right. So we literally did that. We just threw 10 grand each into a pot. Somebody called and we helped them and we sent them to treatment. 
And then all of a sudden the phone kept ringing and we're like, well, we can't keep throwing 10 grand into a pot. Like this shit's going to get expensive. And so, you know, we brought, uh, uh, Kim, his wife, who's really smart at, you know, doing all the back end stuff and, and, and all that, like Paul and I are not those guys. And she figured it out, like set up a 501 C three, like we're a real nonprofit. And we started raising money to send people to treatment. We've sent over 40, 40 or 50 people, I think to date, uh, to treatment with our partner at Valley hope. And, um, so now we're doing our big fundraiser every year is roofers and recovery day. Um, because as, as Paul coined it, he said, waffles get a day. So why the fuck can't we? Yep. So we just coined it and said the first Friday of June is roofers and recovery day. And so we ask roofers all across the country to build a roof on the same day, document it and send it to us, try and get you, you know, get your local news to cover it or something so that you can get some pub out of it and everything. Um, we actually encourage people to tell their customers before they sell a job, Hey, we're going to donate the profits from your roof. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it when shit like that happens. Dylan's going to be so jealous. That's so awesome. <laughs> I love it when just walk around while we're talking. Okay. So the lights stay on. <laughs> if you edit that, I will be so pissed. Uh, <laughs> well, and I mean, that brings up to me, like, you know, I kind of, there's no, I mean, there's very few guys like you that really grew up in the roofing space. Like I fell into it kind of looking right. for a straight commission job because i just wanted to provide so you started as a sales guy i started as a sales okay. guy i answered a freaking ad off of craigslist did you really and i like huge day and you thought it guy. was for a girl yeah <laughs> i was married yeah. So no. yeah yeah oh okay All right. but All right. i mean like i was a huge dave ramsey guy what does that mean i'm a huge i've heard you say that like nine times i mean like, what does that mean so like he's like live a debt-free life like completely debt-free and, you know, and the purpose is to... I'd love to spend time digging into that because I don't believe in that. Does he believe in good debt? Nope. Not yeah, that's all. bullshit. I don't fucking buy that. I love using other people's money. Fuck okay. that. So, so... Sorry. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'd love uh, to do an hour on that. Though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'll do that, on, you know, on a, on a different yeah. one. Just because, like, his whole thing is pay off your debt and then live and give like no one else. So then eventually, like, you can truly live and give like no one else. Okay. Um. So... We, I told my wife, she was a stay at home mom, our little boy, our, my son was just a few months old. And I said, I'm gonna buy you a bigger house. And I said, I'm tired of working hourly. Um, I always seemed to make a couple more bucks on the hour than the guys I was working with just because I'd work my ass off mm -hmm. and I'd work Saturdays or Sundays or whatever after hours. Jeez. However, um, I wanted to go get a straight commission job because I'm like, you know, Dave always talked about sales. You can make really good money. I want to change my family tree. So. Yeah. I, at that time, the two things on Craigslist was insurance sales, mm. which is full of slime balls, mm -hmm. which roofing sales isn't a yeah, whole lot better. No. Um, but I, I, I literally interviewed and the guy was, a, my sales manager was a Dave Ramsey fan. And it was like, I instantly trusted him. That's serendipitous. Isn't and it? yes, yes. Um, so I got into it and then I just realized real quick that I'm one of them guys that I always, if I set my mind to something, I had to go do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to start a business. I've always wanted to. I just didn't know exactly what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so we we did that. Um, so, and I don't know where in the hell this was going. Oh, so getting into the roofing space, like it's it's a way to really help people. Mm -hmm. Like if it's roofer and recovery or if it's just whatever it is, like, you know, it's a profitable business. There's no reason for any of us to hide behind that. We make money. We're in fucking business to make money. Right. You know? Right. So, you know, it's where you can afford to send a guy to treatment. Like you can yeah. cough up that $10,000, you yeah. know, and kind of help with that. So, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like I said, like, you know, roofing is kind of just a train for a lot of our, you know, how we get the money. Dude, down I the tell, track. I tell everybody that works for me that roofing is our widget. We're, yep. Roofing is our widget to be able to, to your point, help other people, right? And and your widget can be whatever your widget is. It doesn't matter. I just happen to know roofing right. roofing really, really, really well. So I'm not gonna go change widgets and have right. to learn a new widget, right? Yep. So that that's why we stick with that. But like I tell everybody, I'm like, you know how we do all this cool stuff, right? Like we do a quarterly give back and, you know, do, do an event or go, you know, make sandwiches for poor people or, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, we can't do that stuff 
if we don't have profit. Yep. Right. So my ask of you is to go make us a lot of profit so that we can go do those things. Cause we can't do those things without money. I can't just do them. Yep. I'm not UNICEF, right? Like I can't just give we're not the, what, what I don't have. We're not the U S government. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, to your point, you're, you're absolutely correct. Right. I mean, that's why we're here. We're here to help people. That's something that I preach all the time. Right. Like I wasn't put on this planet just for the sole purpose of Eric. Right. Right. I, we're, I'm here now to be able to help other people. Now, that being said, though, to the point of roofers in recovery, we need to be able to help those people so that they can help themselves so that hopefully down the road they can help other people. But these people right now need to focus on them. Right. Right. And they need to go to treatment to do that. I went to treatment back in 2009 and to be surrounded in a bubble of being safe where you only focus on your recovery and your sobriety for a full month, right? And you you get this toolkit that you get to go home with and 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 have the tools to be able to learn how to live, right? Because that's what it is. And and for people that are watching and listening that don't understand what that is, right? Cuz like you don't have that past. Right? right? So it's hard it, it's even hard just to explain it to somebody that didn't live that life, right? That didn't, that, that didn't, you know, do Coke until eight o'clock in the morning the next day and feel like you were floating off of a chair. You know what I mean? And you're like, is it the same day? Right. Right. Like the, the, and, and not just once, right? Like every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like it's a, it's a totally different world. And those people need to be surrounded by like-minded people that, that understand what they're going through. Right. And it's our duty to help them. It's absolutely our duty to help them. So, and, uh, one thing that, you know, a, um, you and you and Paul are big names in the, in the roofing space. And also, um, I don't know how to say this without pissing some people off, but legit Ooh. real people, like there's way too many fakes that are influencers mm -hmm. in the space mm -hmm. that it's all about them or they, they're one person, on the camera or on Facebook mm. and then their private life, you know, is totally something different, you know? Yes. And you know, yeah, I love how many fucks you say, yes. you know, because yes. you're, you're authentic. You Could know? we make a list? Let's make a list of those people real quick. And then let's <laughs> name all the name. No, we don't have time. Um, no, but you're absolutely right. Right. You know, there, it, there is this really fine line though, you know, as, as this show grows and as, you know, like everything that you're doing grows and your exposure grows and everything there, there's something that, um, I have to do and I have to do it like once a month, no joke. I have to stop and take an inventory of myself and make sure that I'm continuously doing it for the right reasons yep. and that I'm not doing it because of ego. Yep. Right. Because I will get caught in that. Right. And, and I'll get caught calling Lexi and being like, how many fucking views did we, you know what I mean? And right. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not the point. Right. And I, you really like have to, you have to step back and go, no, we're doing this to help. Right. We're doing this to help other people. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, and that kind of brings to like why we're in Texas, we're at a revolt yes. retreat. Yes. You know, um, the crazy thing is you were at the same free revolt retreat that I was. And I argued with Hunter about this, hmm. but were you at the one that Lex was at? Yes we were at the same fucking retreat and I don't remember you at all. Yeah. Me, I don't remember you either. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because like I said something and I was like, yeah, Hunter, when did Eric join? And he's like, man, he was at the same retreat you were. And I'm like, no, he wasn't. Like, I remember everybody like Derek Stahl was there. Yep. Bubba. Uh, Bubba. Yeah. I assume Bubba was part of Riffers in recovery at that time already. Yeah. Yes, because I knew him. Okay. Yeah. So he was there. I remember, you know, bonding with him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and it's that like-mindedness. You know, the good thing is about You know who I really remember from that retreat? The yeah. fucking guy that just loves selling Conklin to everyone. Andy or Andrew the yes <laughs> he never played football no well I didn't either because I threw, blew my back out but but all but I remember had, was like he'd creep up to you and be like can I tell you about my coatings and I'm like fuck no you cannot sorry <laughs> that's hilarious because he uh, I just remember that he clotheslined Jimmy Coleman during our football game oh really and like he was like we're playing what. 
And we're like, Hunter's like, we're playing football. Oh, that's right. He didn't know what football I mean, he, was. Yeah, he didn't know how to play. He didn't anything. know the rules. He didn't know what a first down was. He Absolutely. didn't know if you could make a forward pass or a backwards pass. Like, he had no idea. I remember that now. That's hilarious. Wow. Yeah, that was quite the retreat. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, and that kind of rolls into, you know, the roofers in recovery or whatever your give back is. And, you know, and that's one thing that I tell people, like, I'm very passionate about Ramsey and financial literacy mm-hmm. and all that. You know, you're very passionate about roofers in recovery. You've went through that pain from the addiction, mm-hmm. whatever that is, you know. But so I've got a few sales guys that work for me mm-hmm. um, and they had they had an addiction problem. They still and, do. Okay. Yes. Yes. You're right. We had that conversation last night, you know, but they've gotten on the podcast and shared a little bit and talked and they lost a really good friend Mm -hmm. to an overdose. Um, so like they're, they're on board. Um, actually we were talking about, you know, spot helping even more this year in Riffers in recovery and I've challenged them and they've agreed to, they're going to throw some of their own money. That's awesome. Um, towards Riffers in recovery, just for what, um, what it's done, what, what addiction, how they've lost the friend yeah. in addiction, you know, yeah. and, uh, and they almost lost their own life in it, you know? So, I mean, that's, that is fun for me to build that. Like, you know, you talk about your ego check, like it's mm-hmm. so easy for me to donate to places that my heart is in. Like I'll just write the check and not even think twice about it, but to see like the team step up and be excited about it. Like that's, that's a lot of fun for me. That's yeah. That's such a rewarding thing to see your team get behind something that a that you know that that you care about but but to see them care about it too right like that is the definition of you building a culture yep right everybody talks about culture and nobody really knows what the fuck it is right i mean you don't until you see it yep right and and when you see your people getting behind you to support things that don't just affect their pocketbook right because this is affecting their pocketbook negatively right technically yep. on paper yep. right now it's not going to down the road right right but it is right now in the short term and salespeople, sorry guys but y'all only think in the short term yep. as a general rule right they are not long-term thinkers so it's, it's why you cannot I know this isn't a teach roofers day, but it's why you can't, it's really, really difficult to take a residential rep and turn them into a commercial rep because it's such a different mindset because you're not going to get paid right away. Right. Right. It it takes a while to close that, that, that deal. So I I applaud you for getting those guys behind it. Obviously there's some background with it, you know, and as well, but to get them to follow you is a really big thing. And you should be really, really proud of that. Like I'm appreciative of shit, but I'm more proud of you. And you should be proud of yourself that you've built a culture where they will, where they will follow you with that. Absolutely. It's a big deal. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I say this in meetings very often, like I'm humble that they choose to bring their talents to work and build what we're building. And, you know, I make it very clear. It's Mm -hmm. way more than about Bob and Emily, you know, however, you know, um, and and they're young kids. Well, I call them young kids. They're in their they're in their mid twenties. Yeah. You know, um, and that's just it's cool to see them because there's always a people bitching. You know, kids these days don't work and right. this and that. And you know what? There's lazy people in your yeah. age group. Yeah. Lazy people in my age group. Sure. At, all over. You yeah. know. So it's just it's fun to see them guys get behind something like that. It is. Yeah. Um, so tell us some more on the roofers and recovery. Are you guys in the process of like getting your own building or something or what's, what's up? With yep. that? So roofers and recovery purchased a rehab facility in Southern Colorado, actually where Paul is from Okay, uh, in the Valley, wherever that is. I don't, I don't actually know. It's, it's Southern Colorado on the border somewhere, um, but bought a place and it's called hope in the Valley. And so they are staffing it. Um, it's getting staffed. Um, I'm not sure what date it's going to be open, but what's really cool about it, it's not just going to be for roofers and recovery clients. It's going to be for anybody, um, but it's going to give roofers and recovery the opportunity to send three for every one person we can afford to send now. Nice. Because the cost is going to be so much more, you know, less um, that we're going to literally be able to send three for every one. So that's a big deal, right? Because to what you're asking about before with Roofers and Recovery Day, our goal is to send 50 people a year, or at least have the ability to send 50 people a year to treatment, which costs about $750,000 a year to be able to send 50 people. And if we can send 50 people for 
a third of that price, then all of a sudden we get to set a new goal of 150 people a year, right? Like that would be amazing. Um, so yeah, so that's really exciting. Um, I don't know the live date on that and everything, but I think, um, I definitely some point in 2023, is going to be open. So is that where they're going now or not? So no, we partner with a, another, with a place called Valley Hope. Okay. Okay. Um, which is actually where I went to treatment. Okay. So That's I have an cool. amazing relationship with Valley Hope. Um, I went to a location in O'Neill, Nebraska, um, about three and a half hours from Omaha, but they have nine locations throughout the country. So it makes it really nice for us because obviously our, our, our clients come from all over the country. Right. And so they they have a facility in Dallas. They have a facility in Phoenix. They have a facility in, uh, Illinois. They have one in, you know, so like they're all, they're all Midwest, you know, located, but we're able to fly people. There's one in Denver, right? So like we can fly them wherever we need to fly them. So we use Valley hope right now as our partner. Um, and, and I hate that that relationship will eventually end. Um, but you know, it just, it, it will. Um, but I will always support them and they will always have, uh, my heart and they'll get my money too, because I would 1000% be dead or in jail if it wasn't for Valley hope. Right. Right. Because there's, there's a lot of people and there might be people listening, watching that can get sober, just going to AA, right. Get a sponsor, do the steps. And like, you got your shit together. I don't know if I could have done that. I don't know if I could have done that. I needed that time alone and away from the world to be able to learn more about myself and, and be separated from the world and not around other people that were, you know, in, in, in my life um, to be able to figure out what I wanted to do when I went back. And there's a lot of us like that. And um, for the people that are struggling right now, they always, it, 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 we always have the the thought of, I can't go. I've got my job. I've got my, you know, quote unquote family, even though they're probably fucking leaving you. Right. right. But I've got my job. I've got my family. I've got my kid. I've got my blah, blah, blah. There's 97 real excuses of why you can't go. But here's the thing. If you don't go, you won't have any of that shit in a very short amount of time. So go so that you can rebuild all your stuff back and have your life and have your family and have your people around you for the rest of the amount of time that you get to be alive because otherwise you're going to lose it all and there's nothing that drives me more crazy than like well i got a i got a job i got to build next week i'm like oh right, <laughs> like right. just go get right. better so that's what we're trying to promote so is the treatment usually 30 days then because it is but like i said i don't yeah, I, so, fortunately, I've never struggled with it, that. So, you know, um, it, it varies. Like, I mean, it, you go in and they do the programming or whatever. Right. And it kind of circles around. So, like, I think that it's like anywhere between 27 and 30 days you get to graduate. So do they like try to bring people in once a week or how is that? set? No, up? people get checked in all the time. Okay. So you can get checked in any day of the week. Right. And then whenever you jumped into the programming is when you jumped in. Okay. But, but as far as like and again, this is just my personal experience with that rehab facility, but then you, you, you go through the curriculum, however you jumped in, but you still start at the beginning with your, uh, with your counselor and with your chaplain and with your, you know, with all those people, like, it's not like, Oh, well, they're on step eight this week. You know, like you don't do that. Okay. Right. But okay. it's just the like lecture curriculum and stuff like that that they're teaching you. So is there, I mean, I know some of the other guys that are part of roofers in recovery, um, in the roofing space. Did any of them go, like, have you sponsored, you know, anybody and then they've, you know, stepped out and, you know, are in your shoes now where, you know, they're out advocating for it? Yes. So, um, yes, we have to be careful because we, we don't, none of the people would mind if I said their name, right? but we don't say their name okay. unless they want to be yep. Yep. said. Okay. Right. Um, but like, but there's people in the documentary, like, I mean, the, the names that I definitely can say is like, we have, because like Chandler Milliken, he went through the program and is thriving. Right. Awesome. Um, and he was, and, and he's been on film and, and everything. So I know he wouldn't have a problem with me saying his name, but we've got, we've got quite a few success stories, but here's the other thing, man, we've had people that have died. Right. Like that we literally sent to treatment 
they were sober for the 30 days that they were in treatment and they got out and within two weeks they relapsed and OD'd. I mean, we've had, I think we've had three or four people that we know that have OD'd since we started this. And that's what makes this really hard is because we tend to beat ourselves up like, well, what could we have done? Nothing. You know what I mean? Like there isn't anything that we could have done right now. That doesn't mean that we're not continuously trying to improve aftercare and making sure that they have somewhere to go and that, you know, they're having follow-ups and all that kind of stuff. But like, we're not a treatment facility, right? We're just trying to facilitate them to get the help that they need. Um, but like, we want to do more, right? Like we want to have partnerships with sober living houses, right? So one of our board members, Robert Ramos owns multiple sober living places in Ohio. And so like, we're going to partner with him to hopefully be able to use, to utilize some of his sober living houses. So when people get out of treatment, they have somewhere that they can immediately go and don't just go back to their world. Right. Um, but there is nothing more heartbreaking than getting that phone call. Um, and like I said, we've got, I've gotten three or four of those in the last few years that we've been doing this and that stings. Right. And then you got to go back and focus on the wins. Right. You know, you got to focus on the wins. Well, and, and you have to realize that people have to, I mean, they got to take accountability and, you know. Um, I know, but we gotta, always think we can do more. I know. Right? You know. I mean, it's just like when you have a sales guy fail. You're yeah. like, fuck, what could I have done better so yeah. that he didn't have to leave? Or You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you always still put it on yourself, right? Well, we want to be the superhero, you know. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, we want to we save the day. It sucks. You know, it sucks. But there's nothing more rewarding when somebody comes out and is thriving, you know. And so we have start. we're starting a new program this year. We're having an advocate uh, program and an ambassador program. And so one program is going to be for people that either went through the program and are now sober and are um, uh, ambassadors for roofers in recovery. And then there's going to be other people like yourself that will ask to be on the advocate board. So we're going to have like a round table twice a year for people that um, either donate a certain amount or um, kind of go above and beyond and promoting what we're doing, getting people to sign up and, you know, help us and all that kind of stuff, because we want input from outside of just our sobriety world. Right. right? So it'll be people in there that, that they might drink. Right. And we don't care. Like if you're a normie, that's great, right. but you have a passion for what we have a passion about and you want to spread the message, you know, to the world. So, um, that's something new that we're starting this year. And so that's something that you'll be We'll be, I'll be talking to you about here in the next month or two. Perfect. I'm yeah. going to pass that off to my wife. Yeah. Um, and no, all seriousness, um, she's had some friends um, and family that's really struggled with that. And that is okay. that is actually something that's near and dear to her heart. Cool. Um, so she, I mean, not cool, but cool. Right, yeah. Right. right. <laughs> you know, and uh, so honestly, that's something that she, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't help out. But yeah. It, it would be something that she can plug in yep. um, and just kind of kind of carry that torch because yeah. we know something like this takes a ton of freaking people, uh, not yes. just a ton of money, but a ton of volunteers yep. and you know, all that. So, I mean, so you're saying if you sent 40 or 50, so, I mean, you're, you know, you've, you've saved 40 lives or so, you know, I mean, like you said, you got to focus on the wins. Right. And, you know, think about the families that's have changed, you know, their truly family trees have changed because of that. So that, that, that became our big coined message in the last couple of years, um, was that our real goal is to put families back together. Yes. Right. Because addiction breaks families apart. Um, and just to, you know, break down the ninth wall, right? Like the other issue was, is that we're having a hard time every once in a while raising money because the people looking in from the outside were like, well, I don't want to help that drunk laying in the gutter. Right. They're like, what do I care about him? Like he's a pile of shit and he's just get up, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. And right. But what they forget is that there's a wife and there's kids. Right. And this was, this guy used to be their hero and addiction got the better of him. Right. The, the disease took over his fucking life and he couldn't get out of it. It wasn't that he didn't want to, yep. he, he just, he couldn't, or, and, he, and he didn't know how, right? And so we, we have tended to focus on the fact that we are trying to put families back together. Um, just from a selfish standpoint of like, A, that's true, 
right? That's exactly what we are trying to do, but people connect with that more as well. So we like to spread that message so that people understand it's not just the addict or the alcoholic that, that is the problem. That just That's just the root at, at the beginning, right? But it goes down. Yep. It goes down into the family. Like it's almost worse yep. for the family. It's worse for the wife. The kid that has to see his parent come home fucked up every night, like that's horrible. That's the one thing that's the one thing that I will say that I am the probably the most grateful for is that my daughter has never seen me drink. Yep. My wife hasn't either, right? I met my wife after I got sober, but my daughter has never seen me drunk and never seen me drink. She's never seen me come home at three o'clock in the morning, stumbling in and making a fucking Totino's pizza at four in the morning, right? And blowing up the house. Um, she's never seen that. And, and as long as I can continue to do the right thing, she never will. Right. And that's a big, that's a really big, big deal because there's a lot of people that don't, aren't able to say that. And they have to live with that guilt and work through that. And that's why I really had no intention of bringing this up, but uh, my father-in-law struggled with addiction mm. um, and he is a recovering addict. Um, but it was just probably right around four years ago, he was feeling sick um, and his mom guilted him, in, him into going to the hospital because she had lost one son um, when he was way younger. Mm. And, uh, the doctor's like, yeah, we're admitting, he, she, I'm sorry, he went to the doctor's office and the doctor's like, we're admitting you, your kidneys, like, I don't know how the hell you're alive. Like your kidneys really? are not functioning. Um, so he literally quit that day, cold turkey, um, and went almost eight years, I believe, before he got a kidney transplant. Wow. And, you know, um, my dad had his issues. His issue was anger, you know, never alcohol or anything. But, you know, my wife says that, you know, unfortunately that, she knew growing up after three o'clock that she couldn't call her dad. Um, and this is not a, you know, bash my father-in-law. Like, you know, yeah. I, I love and respect him for, for who he is, yeah. you know? Um, however, you know, when she said that, I mean, it just kind of like cringe because I think of like all the football games and the basketball games that my dad was at, you know? Um, so, you know, it's just something that, like I said, is like near and dear um, to her. And I'm super appreciative because my father-in-law is a phenomenal grandpa. Yeah. Loves the grandkids, the pieces. And, you know, and, and I know he loved, I know he loved his kids, you know, too. Yeah. It was just, it was an, it was a disease that um, kicked his ass, unfortunately for, for several years. And, you know, it's, it's so nice just to be around him and he just looks healthier and just feels better. And, you know, just, you know, like I said, like my kids are never going to yeah. have to know, no, well, what did, what did we talk about here at the retreat? Right. We had, we had an hour session, I think that we were talking about the fact that you, you know, what is your, what is your most valuable commodity right. time, yep. right? You cannot get more of it, right? So everything that you miss with your kids or with your family or with your wife, whatever it is, like you can, you don't get to go back and get to do that. Like I had a, I had a, I don't want to call it a panic attack, but like, cause it wasn't that that wow that was an exaggeration but like i had i had like this anxiety moment today because i got a calendar invitation from my wife for tegan's second grade uh awards program at school and it's on a day that i already have a flight booked i have to go back to omaha i've got three meetings i have to present to an apartment association i have to present to a commercial building company like i've scheduled these things two three months in advance Right. Because I, when I go back, like I, I jam a bunch of shit in. So like, I can't change the date and just the fact that I'm going to miss that. Right. Right. Like a, a very insignificant moment that like, she'll never remember. Right. But I will. Right. Yep. And it fucking killed me. I was sitting outside and I didn't talk to anybody for like 15 minutes. Cause I was like, I literally was sitting on my phone going, how do I get, uh, how do I change that? I can't fuck. Um, can I change that? Nope. Uh, uh, and I couldn't do it. Yep. Right. And, and those people don't get to get that time back with their families that they missed. Right. I'm sure that your father-in-law beats the shit out of himself or used to, hopefully he doesn't now, obviously. Right. But I'm sure he beat the shit out of himself after he cleaned up and he's like, Oh my God, I, I don't get to have any of that back. I don't get to redo that. 
And for the people that are watching or listening that are going through that, you don't fucking get the time back. You don't get it back. So don't waste it. Right? The best time to stop is today. Yep. Nothing drives me more crazy than when I get the I get a drunk text from somebody that knows that who I am and like wants me to help them. And they text me at two o'clock in the morning and they're like, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna quit tomorrow. Motherfucker, just put it, dump it out now and okay. go to bed and then call me tomorrow. Yep. But they can't. They're like, well, I'm gonna go till tomorrow, you know, like whenever I pass out. All right, man. Don't just do it now. Okay. If you're listening now and you're going through that, just fucking stop now. Yeah, and reach out. Yeah. And reach out. Yes, reach out for help. That's the one thing that we've been talking about here at the retreat as well, right? We started to talk about the fact that we're at the revolt retreat. But right. that's what we've been talking about now is like you have to surround yourself with people that are going to help you and support you, right? And and everybody's got someone. Yep. You might think that they hate you right now and that they're pissed at you. They might be, but they still love you and they still want to help you. Well, and that's like, um, you know, they were talking about, you know, accountability partners yep. and, you know, they said, don't make it your spouse or don't make it your best friend unless they'll truly like step on your toes and be like, Hey Eric, put the fucking bottle down. I don't know? think I, to be clear, I don't think they even said that last part. I think he said, just don't do it. Didn't he? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There at the end, he kind of was like, well, oh, did he walk think? it back yeah, a little bit at the end? Bit, okay. You know? All right. I missed that. But I mean, it's, you know, and like, it was kind of convicting to me with like my team. Like I want them to love me and like me at all time. However, I still have to hold them accountable. And unfortunately there's going to be days that they're not going to like the conversation that we have to have, you know, I've, I've had a hard time with that as well. Right. Because I want people wouldn't think this about me, but like, I want to be liked. Yep. Right. Like, I mean, I realize that I come across as like, I don't give a fuck, but I do like, right. I do want to be liked. And I, I probably get too close to my employees. And so like my last couple of years, I've been spending compartmentalizing stuff so that it's like, don't come to me with that. Come to them Yep. so that it can come downhill and only they come to me. Right. So like real business decisions can be made and then we can go spend our 30 minutes a month that I budget for us to just talk about life. Right. Right. And so that's something that we actively do that we intentionally do is I set 30 minute blocks for every employee that they get 30 minutes of time with me that they can talk about work. They can talk about their personal life. They want to talk about their health or, you know, whatever, right? Like it's, this is your time. Yep. What do you want to do? What do you want to talk about? So I have no idea why I told you that, but anyway, I apologize because here's what I know what we did here, and this is totally my fucking fault, but it, obviously you've watched some of my shows and um, we go down 97 fucking rabbit holes in my shows and I kind of took over and turned it into my show and I apologize. Nah, for that. that's all right. We, we never really have an agenda okay. and they always seem to like work out. All right. Yeah. You I, know, I so. just tend to take over. And so I'm sorry. No, like, this I mean, is I, your show. I, I, wanted it, I wanted it to be about <laughs> roofers in recovery because once again, we're going to sponsor, yeah. we're going to, we're going to support you guys. Yeah. You're um, going to be a platinum donor. Okay. Yes. Um, so, you know, so we're going to, we, we discussed some marketing things for us yep. and that kind of stuff. So yep. we're going to, be very intentional about that good i want to go back and especially with all the sales reps but especially the few reps that have a really personal connection yeah. um they're all there are they already super believe in us and like are they the culture like we genuinely have a good culture like you said that's yeah. a buzzword of that yeah but it's some real of, some of us bullshit but yep. at around us like you know the one guy bought a house and there was somebody one or two people two or two or more people over at his house every night that week painting it and laying floors so we can move them in. And like right. now a couple of guys were too drunk. Maybe they should talk to you uh, <laughs> the day that we, uh, we moved them in, but me and my wife and my three kids, like we went over there that's and awesome. we had to moved in in a couple hours. And like, that's, that's what it's about. Like the yes. team genuinely knows yes. that we give a shit, you know, and, and we're here for them. And, you know, the saying that Dave Ramsey says is business is easy until people get involved. <laughs> Boy, ain't that the fucking truth. So it's like, you know, because like you said earlier, I believe you said, you know, personal business life. It's there's no there's no separating it. If if you're no. going through if you're going through a divorce or going through losing a parent, like your work is going to be effective. Yeah, it, it definitely affected. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to ask one question before we wrap up. Yep. Because I assume we probably are pretty soon. Yep. Um, who is your who is your audience? Who am I talking to? 
It's mainly just, I mean, we just promote it locally. Okay. Um, so it's our podcast. What we try to do is we try to do like one co- podcast kind of like community focused and okay. then one podcast more like internally focused of, you know, introducing team members, kind of let gotcha. them share their story. Yep. So, so local community to find out who you are. Yep. and blah, blah, yep. right. Okay. So highly unlikely that the local community is going to get to the end of the show just because that's, I've watched metrics and it's really right. hard, but I'd pop a clip for this, right? Because what I will say is for local community near Indianapolis yeah, is how yeah. you say it, right? Um, is that what you said? Yeah, I mean, near Rushville is is, Rushville. is home, but. Here's the thing. I don't get fucking paid to say this shit, okay? I do not get paid to say this. Um, I don't fucking know anybody in near Indianapolis at all. But here's what I know. I know Bob, and I know where his moral compass lies. And if you are somebody in that market and not figuring out a way to surround yourself and or work with or work for Bob, you're an idiot. Appreciate that. Take take the time to make sure that you're working with or working for good people and don't sell yourself short on 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 who you do those things with right like the reason that we're here at this retreat is to surround ourselves with good people and when we go home we take this with us so that we can pour into our people and if you're a consumer you should be pouring into companies that pour into their people right so um, i'm nobody and y'all in indianapolis don't know who the fuck i am but it, that's really important. And that's what we preach to our people to take to the clients is, is work with people who give back, work with people who give back to the community, give back to the industry that, that pays them. Yep. Right. Like that is, those are the type of people that you should be working with. And so anyway, I just, there's a plug that was unsolicited and not asked for. No, I, I appreciate your, I appreciate that. Um, and you know, it just, it kind of does wrap up with why we're here, the revolt retreat. Um, there's 80 like minded men, um, across the walk, you know, and very fortunate. Maybe 78. Yeah. Maybe yeah. two of them are. I mean, yeah. okay. well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Hunter's probably saying there's a hundred here and there's yeah. probably closer to 80, you right. know, yeah. but you know, it was, it, it was fun. I got to bring Adam, my videographer, so yeah. he could experience you know, being around this caliber of men, um, that, like you said, like give a shit and give back. And it's not all about how deep Eric's pockets can be or how deep Bob's pockets can be. Like I've never hide, I never hid behind trying to make money. Like, hello, that's what the hell makes the world go around, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, so no, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, any closing remarks about roofers in recovery, like if somebody's watching, um, cause I know there's a few other roofing owners, like I want to encourage them to reach out to you guys and help on that. What is that? June 2nd, June 2nd, the first Friday in June, um, national roofers and recovery day. Uh, we've got a sign up sheet so you can get more information. It, literally the easiest thing to do is message me, right? Just look me up on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. There's not another Eric Obremt in the world. So, uh, oh, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> Fair <laughs> point. Um, but look me up, send me a message. Um, I do check all of my messages. Um, I don't respond to all of them, but if you're a legit human being, I will absolutely respond, uh, to a message. I'll get you a sign up form. Uh, if you just want to donate, roofersandrecovery.com roofersandrecovery.org you can you can donate there um but we to your point earlier we really just want people we really want people to get involved right we want them to support the mission support the cause be part of roofers and recovery day we want to have one day that we can raise 75 percent of our budget for the year so that we can spend the rest of the year focusing on helping people and not having to focus on raising money because raising money is a fucking pain in the ass right like it really sucks and i don't like asking for money Right. So like, let's raise it all in one day. So you don't have to hear me ask for it anymore well, until next year. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's one thing for like our team, we try to do, we set some goals quarterly of doing a give back. And I told the team, I was like, guys, it's way easier for me to write a check. Right. However, that doesn't affect them. Um, right. You know, so like you say, getting, get involved, yeah. um, you know, recruit other people to help, yeah. you know, if you're in recovery and you're in the roofing space and you're watching this, come to our meetings. We have online meetings every Tuesday night and every Thursday morning, uh, zoom meetings. We literally have roofing salespeople, owners, 
laborers, guys, whatever, like from all over the country at eight o'clock central on Tuesdays and 7 a.m. central on Thursday mornings on Zoom um, and have an amazing fellowship in that room um, where we where we have recovery meetings. And it's just it's um, it's it's like it, it's very similar to the brotherhood and the fellowship that we have here. Awesome. Right. And just in a different way. Do you lead that? Sometimes. OK, we switch. Yeah, like it was last night. I couldn't make it because I was here. Paul took the meeting, you know, so but between all the board members, you know, uh, me, Larry, Paul, uh, Robert Ramos, Chris Cox, um, we kind of just pop around and, you know, take different meetings. So mine are obviously the most colorful. Right. right. So the meetings that I share, yeah, are usually fun. There's just a couple of fucks. In yeah. There. Yeah. My stories tend to be. <laughs> raw or yeah <laughs> yeah we won't repeat any of the stories that nah. you and you and taylor were nah. swapping last no, night no no <laughs> no we won't tell those stories no those are for a fucking private room <laughs> yes <laughs> all right eric seriously i appreciate your friend our friendship uh you've helped me on some bids on commercial stuff you know and just always been willing to help so it's yeah. an honor for us to support you guys and help continue to support that so thank you for this um and thank you for taking time um out here at the retreat so Guys, uh, this is going to wrap up this episode with Eric O. And I say Eric O because I'm afraid I'm going to pronounce yeah, your that's name fine. wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with my last name, you know, everybody pronounces it wrong. So, right. guys, thank you very much for tuning in. And seriously, if you're a roofing owner or if you just want to donate, uh, roofersinrecovery.com, get a hold of Eric, get a hold of me. I'll, I'll connect you to wherever and uh, be on the lookout because... I know this episode's dropping real quick, and then June 2nd, we'll be doing more. Uh, we'll have another video of our build that we're doing that day. And nice. Knock on wood, it doesn't rain, but if so, we'll just have to switch it to a different day. So. Yeah, totally fine. Oh, and remember, be authentic. Or get the fuck out. Or get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs>